into get into trouble. But if it's your decision to get into trouble or not to get into trouble, I assure you that if you do, you will not go to But if you don't, no body will bother you. We are very serious about the image of the university. That we must uphold at all costs. Uh, uh, my comrade, uh, the acting chairman, uh, will help you, as I say, this is the first discussion we are having to do. And this is the first time I believe that council is having a such a discussion. We'll continue the dialogue. As I said, we are soliciting your joining us in this. Of so most of these issues we are to from time to time, and uh, we are just starting. Uh, the, one of the things we are doing, which leads us to be explained here, there are two issues we are already starting. One is that uh, you know I was chairman of the committee that dealt with our higher education in the United States which included the university and the college of education. One of the things we found was the number of non-academic staff and the disproportionate way they were distributed. There are some NUC criteria for each academic unit. If we have so many people, and that uh, ratio was never met. So the council decided its wisdom to review all the academic, non-academic staff and redistribute them in particular to meet the NUC criteria for each academic unit. That is the exercise we are doing. And also to put the uh, round face in the round hole. So we have some politicians where they should be in the biochemistry department to be put there. If you are putting them there and they require training, the council says for each education, to recommend training for new people in new departments. So this is what we're trying to do to improve the utilization and opportunity of non-academic staff. No, nobody is going to be removed for anything unless the person decides to return. And uh, the union uh, nasty and the reason that uh, they don't want any of the uh, staff going to uh, the farm. Well, we will uh, we have no plan to do that. If we, reach, if we reach that point, we'll meet with you and uh, the union and discuss it and you see the reasons why this will happen. Okay, but for now, the council has got to do the thing with that and I don't know what it is. But I want you to understand the essence of that. The other issue that has come up is the university, the issue of the university staff school. That committee that uh, here is recommended that the staff school should be on its own rather than merge to the university. In a sense, it's not that it's still there, the university will still have control of the management in a way, but the government should deal with them and give them their subventions, which is currently not the case. But the government is surprising other schools like that that they run. So we are trying to see how they can do and do the project and we made separately for them to government. Uh, the university will still be, the council in particular will still be involved with the, uh, the staff schools. So those who are afraid that uh, the 2009 and all that, it's directly, uh, that is not so. We're just trying to improve. In fact, one of the committee that's looking for the other end of the organizations, they want this to run as one of the best. Uh, uh, staff school and one of those who recommended that there must be accommodation facilities so that people from other places can come to the school. That's one of the things that they recommend and that's one of the things that they get into. And then also more classroom groups of them. But accommodation is so important to attract people from outside the school. And so we all know everything this council is doing is in the interest of this university. And nobody has anybody in mind in taking any action. The only action we take that if you are doing something wrong, we say, no, this is not right, let's do it this way. I've always personally said that I think that's what's in that way. What has happened before we came is the past. 
what you want is that from now on, let's do things right. Let's do things right from now on. Whatever has done well, you done not done well, you not do it at the same time. Because we want to move forward. We don't want to do that for the integration of all. We want forward integration only. No backward integration. So that's, I think, uh, Ah, uh, okay, yes. And I'm just reminded to uh, gender sensitive. No lady has spoken here. So who who has yes, the matter? Chairman of the Government Council, members of the Government Council, colleagues, good afternoon. I am Dr. Clementine Ebiki Austin. And um, I'd like to, I want to be very precise and concise in articulating my presentation. Um, first, I'd like to reiterate the issue of immorality on the part of our students. I know a number of people have mentioned it, but I want to also buttress that point because um, I've heard it said several outside the Bonnie State from students in other universities that the trademark of a Bonnie State University student is cohabitation. And um, I decided to ascertain the veracity of this claim, you know, this allegation. So I actually came to class and then decided to ask the students. You people are known for cohabitation, true or false? And to my amazement, they said, yes. And I said, why is that so? And they gave us, they started pointing fingers at one another. In other words, they, they were trying to show those ones that are engaged in this um, act that is so infradic. So at the end of it all, I had to counsel them, but I understood that some of them had um, financial challenges and so couldn't pay accommodation fee and they ended up um, pairing up with um, their fellow students. So, uh, so I want to emphasize the need, I want to emphasize the urgency for uh, posters, for the university to have posters so that we, the students will resist be able to resist the temptation of um, engaging in immoral acts. So that's one. The other one is on the issue of um, IGR. As I watch this whole saga, you know, this whole drama and, you know, unfold, I am, I am intrigued because um, I did something that was prophetic in, um, I think it was the early part of 2015, around March 2015, when by inspired information, I wrote a proposal which I gave the caption, Financial Prosperity of EPSU, my vision. And in that extensive proposal, I was able to state the things that we can do to raise IGR. In fact, I was specific about the various departments. And then interestingly, I have also attended a workshop organized by NUC. And in that workshop, they, they talked about you know, the, the dwindling fortunes of Nigeria, which is a mono economy. And then um, they were also suggesting that um, in the, very soon, the academia will have to consider commercialization of research findings to improve IGR. So that if I knew this um, interactive forum was going to take this shape, I would have come with that uh, proposal. But I do recall that the Vice Chancellor circulated it, he disseminated the information, and then the various departments, I know FST started um, or have been doing something about yogurt, producing yogurt, 
and um, Zobu and all that. But in my department, which is industrial chemistry, and when you talk about industrial chemistry, we are talking about applied chemistry, translating theoretical into tangible products. We have environmental chemists that are water experts, at least five of them. And I do know that there is no reason why we should not be able to produce bottled water like other universities do in this university. And even distilled water for research, because many of the research, many of our students use distilled water to do their research. So these are areas that don't require so much. And then again, I don't want to engage in self-aggrandizement, but I have several inventions. I'm an inventor. And recently, I was made the acting um, president, president general of Association of Nigerian Inventions. Inventors. And I tell you, I tell you, many of those inventions are mind-blowing. Some of them are not even graduates. They may be artisans, but you still have a number of inventive, innovative, creative works that have been done by so many people. And I do tell you also that there are some of them which you can do in a just one room. I have began to commercialize some of my works when I saw that um, the interest, you know, the tempo of um, doing some of these things that I have suggested, you know, is quite slow. And um, the fact of the matter is that um, when you are disenchanted, disillusioned, demoralized about a number of things, you tend not to give the best that you can give. And I feel that way about a number of issues. This is not a forum to state why. But you can't be the best that you can be when you don't, you know, you, you are not emotionally, you know, stable. If there, are a lot of, if you, there are a lot of factors that have affected your, your creativity, your ingenuity, and so on. So it is important that um, I'm, I, I'm, I might be speaking the mind of others. It is important that these issues are addressed. Like I said, this is not a forum to begin to you know, narrate or uh, enumerate some of these factors. But it's important that we realize that IGR is possible here. We can increase our IGR here substantively by also commercializing, exploring some of these uh, research findings. We have a lot of research findings. It shouldn't be, be, it shouldn't be for just uh, promotion alone. Some of them we can um, explore, commercialize. I don't agree that it's um, capitalism as such, because um, when the need arises, for instance, but in the case of bottled water, would you say it's a big deal for a university to have its own uh, bottled water, which is bought by every member of staff? and even sold outside. That we can do, and more. I think um, I'd like to stop here for now. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's why uh, we need to have the advice of uh, uh, the woman to make it complete. Uh, thank you very much for your suggestion. I think we missed you. On behalf of the council, I have met with a number of uh, faculties that uh, have potential for the I'll just ask her to include your name and we need to get a copy of that you write on. So that uh, yeah, I've been throwing the challenge to everybody to come up with ideas. It is ideas that rule the world. It is not the throne money that uh, rule the world. It's ideas. And so the ideas we can generate here will help us achieve this thing we're trying to achieve. Uh, I'm sure she will uh, help us with uh, all the information she has. The other thing I want to appeal to our lecturers and particularly professors. I think in Nigeria when people become professors, they think that's the end of it. It is your, the beginning of your academic investigation. It is the beginning. You go overseas to see professors, they are in man in the office. Doing this section. 
can do and you can stop playing. That's the easiest thing. And we will be tough. But there are people who are in the same situation here who are very really well put on this game. Let's suppose that we always go with our plan and give excuse. So let's let challenge our professors that the academic output is increased. The international and national grants is a source of income to the university. You take your, you take your ship to the university is part of that, government is income. So please intensify your academic uh, research, your academic pursuit. Your professorship is not the end of academic excellence. It is just the beginning of it. You reach the point where you now understand what you need to research. And if you use it to research the right books, not, not the plagiarism, right books from your own research and from. So in those two areas, and more, more ideas will come, and we will all accept them. So on this note, I think we've exhausted uh, our own hand for the information regarding I don't know if you don't drink for me that there's no light and there's no water. So, you know, this is not a good thing. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and Chairman of Council. In fact, uh, I'm very uh, pleased to attend this meeting with you the uh, council members. The issue of revenue, I, myself, I'm Professor Renato Usman, I'm a professor of Art, Material Education and Administration. See, the university, the Forestate University, has very high potential for generating revenue in general. If there are a good understanding between the council, the university administration, and the government. Our university, the state university, is a multidisciplinary university. And employ wide range of talents and specialists. But hardly we can bring any job without getting a specialist who knows how to handle it. For years now, it has been very, very difficult to convince a political government of a police state. It's not only this present government, it has been consistent. To use the talent in the university and the specialist knowledge in the various departments and faculties of the university to this a good government contract. And as far as I'm concerned, let's take for example, the Global Agency facilitated agricultural development projects in this state. The quantum of money that government spent on consultancy to execute the programs and these projects is sufficient enough to pay all the academic staff of the Faculty of Agriculture. And I stand here to be better. At least I have participated severally in some of these investigations. The quality of staff or quality of personnel that they hire to carry out this government project are really people who are not as talented as some professors and serious minded professionals in this university. Why can't we optimize this opportunity? Especially now we have a new council who will be more knowledgeable than the former ones to ask government to patronize this uh, EC 
particular specialist. I am talking because I know if, let's say for example, the new work project, I do the part of it. The bottom of consultancies that are awarded and executed by people external to each other for the state. The money spent can comfortably pay salaries of several professors in this university. It also applies to several other uh, projects in the look at look at your if I the value chain something. Even the consultant that we hire to provide solutions for the ongoing of the programs are past relative to some of the professional uh, and much economists and agriculturalists we have in the Faculty of Agriculture and the If the council can help us, help the leader, to complete the government, I know. There are certain things that go outside the university because of the interest in getting money. But the university can as well do that for them. We look at it as a business. And at the end of the talk, there must be some externalities accruing to the benefit of the university. That's the information I want to bring to the new council. And if it is uh, looked into properly, and if this is properly uh, achieved, the revenue for running some of the industry programs will not be too much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very useful. I think what we are going to do is to properly reorganize our consultancy units. To properly reorganize our consultancy units. Okay. Uh, we will have a brochure listing all the specialties where we can consult them. It's not just for coming, we can even go outside that. So that will be part of what we are going to be to achieve. That will uh, reorganize our consultancy unit, make a brochure that contains all the specialties where we can consult for people and the type of presentation we can do. Make it available for people. And then the council, as you said, will definitely hear the government to see where what things we can do for them. But we will not just stop the government. Even outside here, what we have that brochure to sell our consultancy unit. And that, I think that will help us. Any type of uh, thinking out of, out of the box that we are talking about, just look at all the areas where we can enhance our outcome. So uh, thank you for the suggestion. We take the time with us. Uh, having received the information which was the last one, uh, I want again to thank you very profusely for your attendance at this meeting. For a very wonderful contribution. I think I can go with the council confident that we now have all of you on board for the good of this university. I will want the image of the university. I want the excellence of academics to be our work work here, and that our graduates will be found worthy of character and learning. And the only character must be there in all that we do in this university. So thank you, and we know we need some more to discuss on this issue. And we uh, really are very grateful for your attendance here. On behalf of the council, I thank you and wish you to be Naturally, I'm expected to say something. Uh, I want to call the chairman of the Capital of us. You know, it's so interesting having me sitting down and listening to every person and then the responses. What I just want to add is uh, when you are making your submissions on areas of internal generation revenue, I would like to suggest that some of the issues raised by some of you should also be attached to those submissions. 
So now when God makes nuclear things, they will take this to comprehensively. I'm sure that when God first started working on some of the contribution, he will not work on them alone. Those who submitted some of these things may be invited to throw some more light in it. Having said that, I like to call upon you. It was a bit of thanks, and I want to join the chairman to thank you once more for answering to our call. Thank you, uh, dear Vice Chancellor. The chairman of the governing council of the state university, Professor Chief Lucia, will call with me. And our dear senior comrade, accept that. <laughs> the members, <laughs> the members of the Governing Council, a lot of you, uh, my dear colleagues, comrades, scholars, <laughs> thank you. Mr. Vachas Moa Chema. It has been a wonderful day. And uh, I stand to sincerely thank the Almighty God for this wonderful period, occasion, and this real opportunity which God has destined that we should meet together with our dear colleagues. Sincerely speaking, Mr. Vachas uh, Moa and uh, Chema. This is first in history in since this university was established. There was never a time where my council, this is the fifth council, has ever dared to interact, to meet with the staff, especially the academic staff of this university. And I, I, I'm so much impressed by your openness for people who know you. I know you have started well. And we're praying, sincerely speaking, that you have to accommodate us. We have a case here. We must tolerate our constructive criticism. We must equally think of how of these issues that have been raised, especially the welfare package, which is capable of motivating them. <laughs> I want to assure you, in as much as thank you, my colleagues, we are responsible. We are very much responsible. And these are responsible scholars. And we assure you that all these issues that have been mentioned. Sincerely, today we have been baptized once again. <laughs> we have been baptized, and there will be a change of mind within the shortest period. When we see those of us probably who have been misbehaving either one way or the other, we are going to be, to change our attitude and make sure that this university should be the best in the whole country. <laughs> Colleagues, you have heard it. You have been giving much. You have been generous. And I believe, in as much as the council is prepared to work with you and to work for your own interests, much is expected from you. So I believe, with God being on our side, we will make this government council proud. I want to thank everybody. Thank the, this. Uh, Members of the government, thank you for this wonderful opportunity and thank our Vice Chancellor. And most especially, thank our dear Chairman and our senior co uh, comrade and comrade, not colleague. He was already on the oppressor's side. <laughs> I remember sometimes that within this week, when we were talking concerning the budget. Sincerely speaking, I think the chairman is very, very passionate and concentrated with regards to the budget. 
in order to take into consideration their interests. Including the council members. So I, I really thank you, sir. I thank everybody. I thank God Almighty for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have a very large ear. We are hearing all this discussion. We are hearing what your spirit has inspired in us. We thank you for the lively discussion. We thank you for the inspiration. We thank you for all those who made their contribution. We thank you for the goal towards which this meeting is looking up to and moving forward to. We thank you for the gift of the new council, and the members of the new council, particularly our chairman. We thank you for all of us. We thank you for the gift of the university and uh, the standard the destiny of this university, which you alone know. We have discussed, we have interacted. There's so much to be done. There's so much movement to be made. It is you who will lead us. It is you who will guide us. Even now, as we're about departing to our various uh, uh, offices or location of service, you will lead us and bring us back again. As it has been said, this is only the beginning of meetings. So that uh, each time we come, we we'll see that the university has moved forward and your name has been lifted higher. May it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.